Hello, we're going back to study more on what it means to believe. I want to take you through a series of scriptures in this lesson that will help you identify some of the characteristics of when believing is taking place. In other words, how do you tell whether someone is believing? How do you tell whether you are believing or not? There's always going to be some telltale signs that will accompany a believing heart. And I want to go through a few of those so that we get an idea of what we are looking for and what we are actually talking about when we say believing God. When we believe, the Bible says we are fully persuaded. Let's read in Romans chapter 4, verse 21. This refers to Abraham after God had spoken to him about being a father of many nations. In this scripture it says, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Abraham believed God, the scripture says. But see, when we study, we see, well, wait a minute. It says that when he believed God, he was fully convinced. Another translation says he was fully persuaded that the God who had spoken the promise to him was also able to perform that promise. And so here we see a, a characteristic that will go with believing. Fully persuaded. When you come in contact with someone or yourself and you've prayed concerning a need, you've asked God in prayer, now are you fully, fully persuaded that God has answered that prayer? Well, I don't know. I sure hope it works. Well, you can tell right away by what they're saying that fully persuaded is not part of their heart conviction. That will help us not to try and judge somebody else, but to use upon ourselves. And many times I've gone to God, in, to God in prayer and said, Lord, I need this or I need that and I present my need. I might throw a scripture or two at him and say, oh, thank you, I believe, I receive and walk away. Oh, now what am I going to do? I don't know where that's coming from. I, what if that never happens? You see, right away, by this definition, that when you believe, you're fully persuaded. I could identify, as I walk away from that prayer, I'm not, I, I don't have that effect. I don't have that. So what should I do? Give up and do without? No, I should go back and rehearse those scriptures again. Let God open my heart and, and speak to me to where I do become fully persuaded that when I ask, he will give it to me. That's one of these telltale signs of believing. What's another one? Faith always works with love. Let's read that. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. It says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. When your faith is working, what's going to be present with your faith? This is pretty clear. It says, the love of God will be there. You see, a lot of hard-hearted, cruel people want to avoid, sidestep some of the requirement and just said, well, bless God, I'm going to believe God for this and that. But see, the condition of our heart will determine the reality of our prayer life, our, whether we're receiving or not. If you don't have love and yet you want faith to work, this says faith works by love. It doesn't say faith works where love is not present. And so that's another telltale sign. Are you fully persuaded? Secondly, are you walking in love toward the people around you? Because any, any variance from what God has said can be a hindrance to us. What is another one of these? The Bible has quite a few indicators what believing actually means. The next one comes from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. It says, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard 
meaning the Old Testament saints, did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. As he said, so I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. One of the requirements for us to have a believing heart and a faith that works is that we enter into a rest as we believe. You see, if you are actually believing God is answered your prayer, you don't have to work it out yourself. You don't have to try and make it come to pass. You don't have to do anything to impress God. You don't have to do anything to impress people around you. The only requirement that we would have to do when we're believing is to obey any instruction that he gave us as he spoke to us concerning the requests that we gave. Faith comes by hearing. And so if he said, go to your grandmother's house and tell her that Jesus loves her, well, you better go do that. But you don't have to do any other thing to impress God or gain his favor because when you believe, you enter into rest. You know, that, that's like when God made the earth and, uh, the way it is and on the seventh day he rested. There's a rest to the believer. We don't have to keep striving, trying to get hold of things. Ah, thank you, Lord, I believe you heard my prayer. Now I rest in you. And so that's a, a sign that we're believing, is when we can enter into rest concerning what it is we've asked for. Another definition, signpost, for believing is this. Patience. It's similar to rest, but it's used in a, a scripture this way. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11 through 15. It says, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. He put those two things together. Through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. One of these side effects of believing is patience. I said earlier that if you pray and you believe you receive, you don't wonder very much about how long is this going to take. And this explains why. Because when you've entered into a believing heart toward God concerning his promises, you enter into a faith and patience that works together. Abraham had a number of years between the time that God spoke to him concerning being a father of many nations until his first child was born. But through that time, he remained believing. That would be an exercise of faith between when your God spoke to you and when you actually have it. And that's when believing is supposed to be working. But you don't have to believe for something that you already have in your hand. It's before you have it in the hand that your faith and your believing are to be active. And so that's one of those accompanying signs. How patient are you? Well, if God doesn't come through by the end of the week, I'm sunk. It's probably not a sign of a believing heart. I've had God tell me things that would happen in 60 days. And then through the course of those 60 days, I'm expecting the answer, oh, he's going to come and give me this, give, give me this, and provide the need. You know, and the calendar keeps clicking off day after day. We're getting closer and closer to those 60 days. 60 days marked on the calendar. Get right down to it. The weekend before the 60th day, you're starting to say, well, where's my faith? Am I still what? Now you can rehearse. 
Am I still fully persuaded? You see, am I still patient? Am I still in love with everybody around me? Or have I stressed out and just chewed everybody up and down and spit them out? Am I still resting on his promise? And is, is, is faith and patience in place? The 60th day comes and I still don't have the answer. What happens? You stay calm. You stay in faith. You stay believing. And about 3.30 in the afternoon on the 60th day, the answer was manifested. Will God take you to the very last moment? Sure. But it won't matter to you because as, as you hold on to your faith and not let doubt take over, you're still as fully persuaded even though it's the 60th day as you were that very first day when you said amen as you made your request to God. The, these attributes are very real. Let's read another one. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. It says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. This says that when faith is present, when believing and acting on that faith is present, that you are, what? You have full assurance of your faith. It's much like being fully persuaded. Just a different language God is using to show us these attributes of what it means to believe. One more before we close. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36. It says, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. This one gives you quite a bit of what it is going on in your life between the time you said amen after the request and that having the answer in your hand. Don't cast away your confidence. In other words, your confidence is there because you've got God's word on the subject and faith has come to you. He says don't cast that away. Hold on to your confidence that God answering your prayer. And then he also says that you have to endure some things. You notice that? Endure. We don't like to think that we have to have endurance, but it's part of, part of what happens here on this earth. And then another phrase that is important, it says, and after having done the will of God. Again, I want to say to you, if he's telling you to do something, then you must do that as part of your faith process. Doing the will of God. Then it says, after that, you shall obtain the promise. And so we're, we serve a God who is fully faithful to his promises. He will always do what he says. But we also are human beings with a tendency toward human weaknesses. We can doubt we can throw our confidence out the window and let worry take over and say, oh, what are we going to do? And start pulling your hair. But he's saying don't do those things. Let faith and the accompanying attributes that go with your believing, keep them in place and you're fully assured, full confidence that you'll have what you ask for. That is some of the attributes of what it means to believe. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful that you have given us enough in your word that we might come to a full understanding of our part of this believing promise. Lord, help us to be honest with ourselves. Help us to look in the mirror and dare ask ourselves, do we have these accompanying attributes when we want to quickly proclaim that I'm believing God for something. Lord, help us and we'll give you the glory. And may you be glorified through all that's said and done. In Jesus' name, amen.